Hi everyone, this is Erin from Envision Community. Welcome to the third video of our sneak peek series and today I'm really excited to introduce you to the new theme editor. So here it is. We've built this entirely from scratch and this is where the magic happens. The new editor provides an instant preview of what your theme will look like from the second you modify a setting. There's a lot to cover in this video, but before we begin, please keep in mind that this is a pre-alpha version of Envision Community 5, so some areas of the editor may change before the official release. With that said, let's dive in and make a custom theme. To the left of the editor, you'll see a live preview of your community. You can navigate to any page as if you're browsing your site normally. At the top left of the editor, you'll find icons which switch you between the light and dark versions of your theme. And below that are buttons which change the viewport size from desktop to tablet to mobile. This is a really convenient way to ensure your theme looks great on every device without needing to manually resize your browser window. And again, these previews are fully interactive, so you're free to navigate your site as much as you like. Let's move back to the desktop size and take a closer look at some of the settings, beginning with color palette. Editing colors in version four was a fairly time consuming process. For example, modifying the color scheme from the default blue to another color meant that 26 theme settings needed to be changed. In contrast, the version five theme is powered by just three colors. Primary colors are responsible for styling the main elements on your page, such as the Start New Topic button. Secondary colors control minor elements, such as pagination links, while the base color is responsible for controlling the overall tint of your site. Clicking on these colors opens a color picker. Let's change this blue color to yellow. You'll notice two things have happened here. First, the preview window updated as soon as we modified the color. All elements which are previously blue now use yellow, including the Start New Topic button and some link colors. Secondly, the text color in our button has changed from white to black. This is our automatic contrast feature and it ensures our text is easy to read on our new yellow background, since white text may be difficult to read for some viewers. Below the color picker is a text box with our color displayed in HSL. You can paste your own colors in this box in any format. So as an example, let's paste a hex code. We'll press enter on our keyboard and there you go. Since this color is darker than our yellow color, our button text has changed back to white. Let's go back and we'll edit our base color. The base color controls the tint of your background and text colors. Let's try a few examples. Here's gray. Here's some red. Here's some purple. I think blue complements the primary color nicely, so let's stick with that. While we're editing colors, let's edit the dark color scheme. Clicking the moon icon changes the editor and the preview window into dark mode. You'll notice that our new primary color hasn't been transferred to our dark color scheme. This is because some colors may not work well on both light and dark color schemes. Imagine for example if your brand color was black. That might work nicely on a light theme, but it's not so great here. Let's change it to a new color. And let's also change our base color slightly too. Below the color palette, you'll be able to control the color scheme options. The default color scheme determines what color is shown to new visitors, either system, light, or dark. The setting below that lets you hide or show the color scheme toggles from the bottom of your page. As an example, if you only want to offer a dark theme to your visitors, you would set this option to dark and you would disable the toggles. For this demo, let's stick with system and give visitors the option to choose their preference. Next up is logos. Here we have three types, a text logo, an image logo for desktops, and an image logo for mobiles. Let's edit our text logo. We'll change it to theme editor demo, and you'll notice that the logo updates instantly with our new text. Since we don't need a slogan for this site, let's remove it. Below that, we have multiple options to help us style the text logo. The first option here lets you change the font. These fonts are a combination of system fonts and web fonts. The web fonts are hosted locally on your site for optimal performance. Next, we can change the font weight, which basically affects how bold the font is. 
and then we can change its size. We might want a different font size for mobile logos, so that can be edited too. And we can see a live preview by changing our viewport to the mobile option. If you'd prefer to use an image logo, you can assign it using the image logo options. Let's edit the mobile logo. You'll notice two upload fields here, one for the light theme and one for the dark theme. First, let's upload a logo for the dark theme. We have a slider down here which lets us resize our logo so it fits neatly. Now let's change back to the light mode so we can test our logo there. Since the logo we just uploaded is white, it wouldn't work very well on a white background, so we'll upload a darker version instead. How easy is that? Let's switch back to the desktop size and upload a larger logo for the light and dark themes. We'll adjust its size using the slider, and we're done. Super, super easy. Okay, moving on to layouts. These options let you assign the default layouts in your community. In our first sneak peek video, we showcased the new side panel layout. This is where you can enable it. We can also enable our new feed view for forums. And if we click on a forum, we can change the topic list layout to the snippet view. Let's also change the layout of topics from the traditional table layout to the newly introduced compact layout with an optional setting of featuring the first post if we wish. Next up, let's visit our homepage, change our page layout back to classic and flick into light mode. Now it's time to explore the header options. You'll notice two tabs here, colors and settings. Under colors, we have a list of elements we can customize. Let's edit the primary header background. Here we're presented with a range of swatches which are powered by the base, primary and secondary colors from earlier. The base color is split into 12 different shades and it's a perfect way to ensure your theme adheres to your color scheme with very little effort. It almost couldn't be easier. Below that we have our primary color with light and dark shades. The contrast variant at the bottom is a simple way of ensuring we have a nice contrast color against our primary color. The same logic has been applied to the secondary color. But what if none of these colors suit our requirements? That is where the color picker comes in handy. Here we can easily choose any color or even paste in our own color like before. Let's flick back to the swatches tab and choose a color from the list. While we're here, I'll also assign a new color to our secondary header background. A major hurdle with themes in version four was customizing the header. Depending on the complexity, this would typically involve complex modifications to the CSS and HTML. That is a thing of the past with version five. If we flick over to our settings tab, you'll see a brand new interface for customizing the header. These blocks represent the header elements in your theme. The logo is currently on the left, followed by the navigation in the middle and the user panel on the right. Let's reposition some of these elements. We'll move the breadcrumbs onto their own line outside of the header and we'll move the navigation so it sits below the logo. Let's swap the position of the user panel and search bar too. How easy is that? Maybe you prefer to place your breadcrumbs at the very top with your search panel on the right and your logo in the middle. No worries. It's honestly such a fun tool to play with and we're really excited to hear what you think. Let's use this layout for our demo. Below the drag and drop area, we can customize the header further. We can use these sliders to change its height or we can enable navigation icons with a single click. There are of course options to edit the mobile header too. Let's step back and we'll edit the body settings. In this panel, you can customize global elements such as the body background and text colors. Under settings, you can change the max width of your site, change the font family, change the font size, reposition the sidebar and restyle avatars. Next up, let's customize content boxes. Here we can edit the colors of boxes and box headers. And under settings, we have the ability to customize borders and shadows. Let's reduce our border width and increase our shadows. Or for something different, let's remove shadows entirely. We'll remove the border radius and we'll add a thicker border. Theme editing has honestly never been this easy. And there you have it, a customized theme that looks great on desktop and mobiles 
with a new color scheme, new logos, a customized header, new page layouts, and restyled content boxes. For those of you who want to apply more advanced customizations, we've also added a really convenient way to access your custom CSS file. To demonstrate, I'll add a small piece of code to make buttons use uppercase text. And there we go, very handy. I should also mention that the new theme editor is fully responsive. So even if you're away from the desk, you'll be able to change colors and settings, upload new logos, redesign your header, and even add your own code. Developing this new editor has actually been a lot of fun and it's even more fun to use. Themes have never been this easy to edit and I'm really excited for you all to get your hands on it so you can have a play for yourself. But for now, let us know what you think in the comments and we'll see you next time.